Hey everyone, it's Coach Mo Fall. How are you doing today? This is episode two in Get That Job. Uh, today we're going to talk about get that promotion, or better said, maybe did you get that promotion? And if you didn't, what might be going on that you didn't get the promotion? And what actually might be going on after you don't get the promotion? Can you save your face? Can you survive that kind of a career turn? Can you navigate that? So I want to tell you something um, pretty factual about my career. I literally got maybe two promotions in a 30 plus year career. Um, I know I hardly look a day over 30 myself. Uh, I got two promotions. One of them was when I was in my late twenties and I was a director of a small organization and they were ready to grow. And I was kind of like the only one running things. So they made me like a regional manager and, um, that was cool. That was fun. Uh, I was ready for it. Yep. I was rocking it. Um, Almost everyone who reported to me was older than me, and that was kind of like a weird thing. I forget if I got more money. I probably got a little bit more money, um, but I was like super serious, and it was in the um, late 80s, so women were wearing shoulder pads, you know, smart suits. I went to a really fancy um, uh, suit place for, for getting a, buying a new business suit. I spent like a lot of money on it, and I was like, oh, wow, this is like a – big suit expense. I'm going to have to wear this twice a week or three times a week to, to make sense of it. Um, and then I got another promotion again, small company. And, um, I had to beg for it. I had to rationalize it. I had to have market data. I had to come loaded with like a business plan for it. And that didn't feel good that I had to work so hard to convince them to do this. And eventually I outgrew that position. Anyway, I want to tell you what, in my career and in the careers that I coach, a lot of the women who I work with, um, the biggest career moves they make are outside their current company. Um, you can make a career move inside your current company, but it's, it's a little bit more difficult to navigate that. Um, today's day and age, there's not as much official mentoring. And if you work for a really large, like Fortune 100 maybe even fortune 250 company, they might have um, really kind of pathways developed and that sort of thing. Not many people are in those types of tracks anymore. And it's kind of like you're on your own to put your career steps together and to really navigate what's next, what's the next move for you. And if you don't do that proactively, you're going to be left behind because you're not going to be seen as someone who really wants that. And, you know, spoiler alert, if you're a working mom, please don't think you have to compromise your mom duties and your mom value and priorities for a higher, better paying, more responsible job. You can be a working mom and still navigate a higher level job. It's done all the time, but you, you can't do it if you're in conflict about it. You can't, you can't be in conflict about wanting more, wanting more success, but the kids and soccer and who's going to feed them. Like if you're in conflict about it, you're not going to get it. And if you do get it, you're going to resent one of these two things. So you have to get straight around that. A lot of the women I work with are, are working moms. Um, so many women wait till after their kids are like senior, junior, senior in high school for them to take their career really seriously. And I say, it's not necessary to wait that long. It's really not that necessary. So let's talk about promotions and why you want them. Let's talk about why you might not get them. And then let's talk about, so here's a few things. We're going to talk about promotions. We're going to talk about um, why you might want them. We're going to talk about why you might not want them. We're going to talk about what happens when you don't get them. Uh, maybe we'll talk about what happens when you do get them. And then we're going to talk a little bit about, well, maybe something else would be better. Got all that? I'm going to try to remember all of that list. If you would like, uh, hello, folks. Um, if you'd like to ask me a question, 
you know, about anything career-wise, I'd be happy to answer. And I'll um, I'll repeat your 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 uh, chat because this later goes to a podcast, and uh, folks won't have the nest the the eyes on the on the comments. But feel free to ask me a comment, and um, I'll get to it. Um, I'll keep my eye out for the comments. Please also comment just to let me know that you're here. I'd love to know who's here and uh, what I can do for you. So let's talk about promotions. <coughs> and I'm going to excuse myself ahead of time. I'm on the tail end of this cold. And, um, you know, every time I ramp things up and get my energy going and uh, take myself to the next level, my team's rocking it. Just energetically, the body goes through a little, a little reshuffling. Uh, so like warning to you, if you're going to up level yourself, get your rest, get your hydration, um, get some nice gentle exercise, or if you're a regular uh, power exerciser, stay with it, but don't overdo. If you're going through a massive transformation, an up leveling, um, just be a little bit gentle on your body because it's going through the energy with you. So, um, so here's the thing. So why do you even want a promotion? So most people who want a promotion want to contribute more, have more authority, responsibility, and they want to have more of a contribution. Of course, it's it's our soul's desire to want more in life. A lot of people get this confused. They think that wanting more in life is from the ego, and it is not. It is absolutely not. Now, it could come from the ego, but most of the time wanting more is coming from our soul self expanding and wanting to grow. It's our natural inherent journey on this planet for our soul to expand and want to grow. It's the journey we have. And if we don't grow, we feel crappy. So if you haven't grown in your career, if you haven't up leveled, you're going to feel crappy. Most women, when they book a clarity call, as a matter of fact, if you haven't had one book one, let's see if we can sort out your career for you. Um, most women, by the time that they've booked that clarity call with us, are so diminished and so shrunken down because they've been playing small because the programming and conditioning that they grew up with didn't help them learn how to, how to reach and achieve for more. It taught them to be polite, be perfect, be proper. I'm going to see if I can come up with another P, um, be precise. Um, don't ruffle anyone's feathers and certainly don't be greedy. Oh no, do not be greedy. Do not be selfish. And don't be too loud either. And if you're if you're too smart, like the boys won't like you. So don't be that either. And I'm kind of kidding, but I'm not because all of these things are conditioned in you. If you're a woman who's been raised in the last 50 years on the planet Earth, I don't care what country you're from because I deal with women all around the world. This is pretty much the messages, the message that you got. And you know what? There's still a lot of places that are totally promoting uh, women being subservient and not being empowered. And we know about the Me Too, Me Too movement, and I'm all in on women flexing their power. I'm all in on men flexing their power, but it's not the way that we think power is. It's not the way power has been in the world. We're going to bring power, a new identity. As, as women get powerful, uh, as some are, and we have begun to make momentum in that, we're going to redefine what power looks like. So that's something new. Power for women is not the same as power for men. Power for men is really more forcefulness. And power for women is more uh, inclusive and engaging and influential versus forceful. And I could spend probably a whole week talking about this, something I've studied a lot, something I coach on a lot. Uh, the women who I work with who don't want the promotion, who don't want that big job is because they can't identify with what they think that looks like. So, so going after the promotion typically has a conflict point in who you see yourself to be and how you want to be in the world. But I want you to do an inventory for yourself and really check it out. Is it true that that promotion is going to force you to be something different? Is it true? It's really going to take away from your family. Most promotions come with an increase in pay. And I say most because I've seen a lot of women get promotions and they don't get paid for them. What? No. If you're going to have a greater contribution, more authority, more responsibility, and more domain, you're going to get more money. Come on. Ask for it. 
don't just let them say, well, in six months, we'll see if it's like working out and then we might think about it and maybe we'll think about it again and think about it again. No. If you're going to have increased responsibility, get more money. Okay. Ask for it. You have to ask. Not everyone's going to offer because they're like, oh, maybe we'll just give her some more stuff and she'll just lay over and let us do this and won't ask for anything. Don't be a pushover. Feminine power does not mean that you're a pushover and you let people take advantage of you. So why do you want a promotion? You want a promotion because your soul is expanding and you want to have a greater contribution. When you make a greater contribution in an organization, you're going to have a greater compensation. That's, that's the way it goes. So if you're over 10 people, you're going to get paid a certain amount of money. If you're over 100, you're going to get paid that amount of money plus some. Every company has different tiers and different ways that they make sense of that. But in general, having a greater domain means a higher paycheck. So what kind of promotion is going to be more advantageous for you? The ones that actually have a closer tie to the money. The closer you can get to the money flow, the more advantage that you have over your own compensation, the responsibility that you're going to have, the value you're going to have for the company, and, and having you know influence in the company. So if you're moving away from something that has profit and loss or income associated with it, you're probably diminishing your career arc. So you always want to be considering a promotion that's moving you toward money, toward the equation of being responsible for money and profitably. Don't be afraid of it. Are you running your household? Okay, you might be saying, yeah, but I got lots of bills, whatever. Do you know how to do math? I mean, simply stated, do you know that one plus one equals two? Do you know that two minus one equals one? I mean, this is what running a profit and loss statement is. It's all about uh, making sure that you're not spending more than that's coming into your department. It's really simple. It's not too complicated. And it involves, you know, like things called spreadsheets and P&Ls and cash flows. It's really not that hard. Um, someone can show you and, you know, go for it. So that's the kind of promotion that you want. If you're in a type of position that doesn't have money attachment and you're more like a subject matter expert or a contributor in an area that doesn't really bring money in, um, you're probably going to like top out um, sooner than you might want to. So where you can get money, where you can get more responsibility around money or around income or around sales, around stuff coming in or money being saved, those are like better positions for promotional status. They're better on your resume, et cetera. So go in that direction. So those are the types of promotions you want. And again, why do you want them? Because your soul wants to contribute at a higher level and you want more money. And don't tell me money is not important. If I hear that one more time, I'm going to have to call that person a liar. You might really think money is not important. I mean, you might really, really think that, but it's, it, it's, it's a lie. Someone got to you and convinced you that that was like a better way to think about money. And maybe you're scared of money. So you're like, I don't want money. I don't want it. If you're scared of money, it's not going to come your way. It's kind of like, you know, anything else. Like if you're, if you're scared of it, why would it want to be around you? So don't be scared of money. If you are scared of money, you've got a problem and you need help. Okay. That's just the bottom line. So go for the money, go for the higher contribution because your soul really wants that level of happiness and shining. And all money is, is an exchange of energy. Oh, thank you for your great work. Here's some more money. Oh, thank you for your great work. Here's some more money. And here's the thing. You have to be responsible for the money that you make. You have to manage it. You have to do right by everything. You have to be smart. Don't be irresponsible and self-sabotage. Don't do that. It's just, it doesn't look good on you. Honestly, get a, greater, get a better job. Go for the promotion. Move yourself toward money responsibility in the work, in the job, and move yourself up the pay scale. It's going to feel great. You know what? Vacations are better. Grocery shopping's easier. Paying bills is more funny. More funny. <laughs> I saw Paula's comment. Money is my friend. So I was like, um, having more money is just easier. It's easier. And people say, oh, more money, more problems. Really? The only people who say that are the people who don't have money. Yeah, that's true. You know, when I was younger and not making uh, that much money, uh, having a flat tire was like a big problem. 
because I had to scrape through. How was I going to afford 150 bucks to take care of this new tire? It was a big problem for me. And as I began to grow in my career, $150 problem was like nothing. And then, you know, I got a bigger car and fancier car. And then my flat tire or a new tire was like $350. And it was like, okay, that's what it is. That's what it is. Um, so your problems of today are small compared to what you can handle in the future as you grow and develop as a person, as you grow and develop as a, as a professional, and as you grow and develop in your ability to attract and receive compensation. This is a serious, serious issue. We talk about money in my 12 week kick-ass workshop for a really good reason. Most people who are not making the money that they want to make is because they have a bad rapport, deep relationship problem with money. And we get at that and we start solving those things um, because don't you want to love money and have money love you and have it come your way and be in surplus? Don't you want that? Of course you do. Okay. So that's why you want the promotion. What if you go for the promotion and don't get it? Now what? Oh, goodness. Well, there's a couple of reasons why you probably didn't get it. And I'm going to give you the biggest reason why people aren't promoted is because they're not seen by the next level of management as someone who could handle it. So if you're working too many hours, if you show up at meetings late, if you're always like, oh gosh, oh geez, if you're always in victim mode about how much work you have to do, eh, eh, you're not going to get a promotion because people are going to be like, well, she kind of can't handle what she's got now. We can't elevate her. That, would, that wouldn't work. That's the same way with money, by the way. The universe is really, really cool at kind of checking out who can handle more money. So manage yourself accordingly and manage your time and manage your workload and manage your attitude at work. If you're the person who's like rushing in late to meetings going, oh, I'm glad I made it here. and I'm so important and I'm so busy, 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 busy. If that's you, cut it out. You're not going to be seen as promotable. And you're a pain in the ass when you come to meetings. Like, why do you have to be that way? Seriously. So the people who are promotable are the people who manage their work, manage their time, don't have 70 hour work weeks and are starting to speak the language of the next level up. This is a big issue. If you're speaking from the problem of the, on the ground, if that's your viewpoint, if your viewpoint is down, you're not looking for a promotion because promotions don't happen down here. Promotions happen up there. Oh, so you've got to start looking at the view of what the people up there are thinking, what they're saying, how they are, who they are, their characteristics, and are you like them? Now, I talk to women all day long and they're like, oh, the VPs around here, oh, I, don't, I would never want to be like them and you have to be cutthroat and whatever. You know what? That may or may not be true. If you're one of the VPs, it might not be that way. You might be seeing certain things because you have a bias because maybe you're looking at this and maybe you're not looking at this. So if you want to go for a promotion, you have to stop overworking. You have to stop playing victim to your workload. You have to be, um, you have to be carrying some level of boundaries around you and you have to start looking upward up there. What are those people carrying about? What do they do? How do they dress? How do they show up? You have to begin to pay attention to the next level up because if you want a promotion, that's going to be you. And if you can't get there, if you can't be that person, you're not going to get a promotion. The promotions you will get are the promotions that people want to keep throwing more on your back because you will take it and you will do extra work and they can take advantage of you. I just sent an email out um, last week, basically, uh, making sure that you knew that your employer was thanking you for overworking, being underpaid, putting up with crap, uh, not getting promotions, not getting a pay raise. Like, thank you very much, says the employer to you. If that's your current situation, either you're really stuck and really in a bad space and or your employer has a bad culture, doesn't know how to honor people and you need to get the heck out of there. But if you take the same energy to the new job, that you have here, you're going to find the same stuff happening. So you have to change in order for you to get a promotion 
at your current work, you're going to have to make some changes about who you are, how you show up, how you think about the world, and basically how you manage yourself. Again, look up, look sideways. Don't be so busy with looking down. Okay. So that's going after the promotion. So if you're not getting a promotion, you probably have one of those things wrong. And the other thing is, are you likable in meetings? I talk about my biggest pet peeve pretty frequently, but today I'm going to bring it up again. Um, I hope people can hear me. I'm not getting too many comments, so just want to make sure uh, folks can hear me and, um, and everything's going because the next thing I'm going to talk about is really, really super duper important. Don't be the devil's advocate. I'll repeat that. Do not be the devil's advocate. Don't. That's no longer a good thing. It's not cool. It's a career limiting move. A, because it pisses everyone off in the meeting. B, it makes you look like you have nothing good to say and you need that excuse in order to sound smart or important. FYI, you don't need that excuse, but it's just a convenient way for you to get your word in without seeming like you're whatever. It's like, an, it's just a defense mechanism. It's, it, it, it's just unattractive. Don't do it. If you have something important to say, if you have a better solution, if you have a better idea, just say it with your heart and how smart you are. Just, just contribute and engage and be likable about it. Don't be prickly and unlikable because we don't want to invite you back to the next meeting after your devil's advocate too many times. And then there's going to be that one person who's going to be like, well, she has really great ideas. Yeah, but the way she throws them around on the table, it just doesn't feel good. And who wants that? So don't be the devil's advocate in meetings. Be likable, be helpful, be engaged, be insightful, be solution oriented. These are the things that are going to help you get promotions. Um, also, you're going to have to like make friends with people at higher levels. I don't mean make friends like go play bridge, go out drinking. I mean make friends like be friendly, ask for their help, uh, talk to them, see what's going on, be interested, be curious, be concerned about other things going on in the world of your, of your company. And by all means, understand how your company makes money and how your job has to do with that. Super important to know. And if you don't know that, don't interview internally because you have no clue. So get a clue and figure that out. So if you go for the promotion and you get it, yay! We've helped lots of women navigate in their uh, current organizations, get bonuses, promotions. Um, you have to get more money. Yes, you must. You must get more money. If you're getting a promotion, don't say, well, the title's good and it's going to look good on my resume. I don't need to make more money. Don't do that, please. That's why there's a gender pay gap in this world. Don't do that. Ask. Ask for more money. Mo, how much? I don't know. The internet's basically free. Google it. Look on uh, in the marketplace what that job is worth at companies like your company, et cetera. Get some information. Uh, in many companies, uh, salary ranges are sort of public information to that into that company. So do your homework. Now, most companies are a little bit reluctant to give more than 20%, uh, even if the promotion gets you like greater than that. So there's a lot of politics around what people are willing to do internally. Like I said earlier, it may not be the best way to raise your income, but if you can get a resume builder, if you can get a little bit more money, if you can get some different experience and really, really develop a career path that's going to feel good and be better for you, go for it. Go for it. But always make sure there's more money. Additionally, make sure that you understand what that new department is all about or if it's just a higher level role. You're going to have to like make friends with the people who you're going to be now working with or now a superior of, et cetera. Navigate that and be smart about it, Okay. Um, all right. So that's, that's, if you get the promotion, yay. And celebrate, 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 and make sure that you understand this as well. Um, title and compensation need to be added to a promotion. There's no promotion if there's not a new title and there's, it's a half a promotion if they don't give you more money. 
uh, titles are currency. They're currency because on your resume and what you say that you can do is super important. And so a, a good title is worth a lot. But don't get the title and then they're like, well, we get your big title. We're not going to pay you as much because a title is meaningful. Don't do that. I'm telling you that in this, this in a secret society type of type of lingo. Okay. So make sure that you get the fanciest, greatest title you can get and make sure you get the most money that you can get. Ask. Don't fear asking. Ask. Very few people get what they deserve by sitting around and having someone hand it to them doesn't happen. Now you might know someone, Oh, well they got a promotion. They got like a 45% raise and that, da, da, da. okay. That may be one, but I'm going to tell you what, most of the time, uh, people have to ask for the level of, of raise that they're going to get. I just helped a woman negotiate a new job. So it wasn't a promotion within. Um, and, and she went back three times and you know what? She kind of didn't really want to, but I encouraged her to keep going back and making the ask because at one time it was a salary, at one time it was a vacation, at one time it was this other bonus package. So it's like you you don't get weary in advocating for yourself. Like you can't get tired in that. You 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 cannot because being tired, let's just think about this. Being tired or not wanting to ask, I'm gonna offend them. It's a business. Ask for more money. If you don't do the ask, let's just say you don't do the ask and maybe you leave ten thousand dollars on the table. It's not a lot of money this year. It's, you know, $1,000, maybe $833 a month minus taxes. Maybe that's 600. Yeah. 600 bucks a month. That'd be helpful. And you know, car payment and some groceries, you know, but if you multiply it by the number of years that you're leaving that on the table. So if you're 45 and you're going to work 20 more years and you left 10,000 on the table today, every raise that you get is going to be less because of that. So let's just do the 10,000 times 20 years. Who wants to do that math? That's $200,000 that you've left on the table because you were afraid to ask for more. So ask for more. It matters, especially when you start looking at the long haul. Every increase in compensation you get is going to accrue for your next move, for your next this, for your next this, for your next this. So ask. The money matters. It adds up. It's meaningful. Do it. Pay attention, folks. You got an expert talking to you. Okay, so what happens if you don't get the promotion and you still have to work there and everyone knows you went for the promotion, you didn't get it, and some, I don't know, better looking younger person who might be of a different gender than you got it and you're embarrassed and you don't feel good and la, 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 la. Well, you know what? You have to take stock of why didn't you get the promotion? Was it a political outmaneuvering? Was it someone's favorite? Was it really that you didn't have the skills that they were looking for? Was it that you fell flat on the other things I mentioned earlier about being seen as promotable, about being likable in meetings, looking upward, talking upward, talking in the right language of the people who were above? Like, if you missed out on all of that and you didn't get the promotion, like, okay, learn your lesson and start getting to work on rounding out who you are and how you are and have some conversations with some people who can help you navigate things because it's not over, even though it feels like a sucker punch and it may be enough for you to like, be like, oh, I need to get out, get out, get out of here. That may be true. Your next move may be outside the company. But I wanna tell you this, don't spin your wheels, don't start feeling all victimy over it and um, you know, head held high and go for the next one, okay? So this is not the end. Uh, there's been plenty of promotions I did not get. And the final promotion that I did not get caused me to be ready for the next opportunity that came my way literally weeks later. A headhunter, an executive recruiter called me about an opportunity at one of our competitors. I had just been passed over for a promotion. And I got to tell you, had that not happened, I probably wouldn't have been open to the conversation. Thank goodness it happened because I escalated my career. I had a great run at this fabulous company. I loved it. It was a it was a nice company to work in. It was sophisticated. It was everything I was looking for. It was it was the cherry on the top of a great 30 year career. And I really cherished that last role. And any of you who are in that company, rock on. We did great work. Um, and things are still rock and roll in there. So um, you may you may have gotten the um, 
the penalty card from your current employer, but you may have gotten the uh, take it to the next level for someone else and for another opportunity. So don't always look at it as, you know, what you didn't get. I know it's like, well, when God closes a door, he opens a window. Okay, we get that. But practically speaking, um, start looking outside and see what you can get. So let me just take a, a look at some of the comments, see if there's some questions out here. Drink your fresh juice, four liters of water, move daily. Four liters of water a day. That's a hefty amount, Monica. All right, you're kicking ass. Um, uh, can you share how to promote up in a transition from one company to the next? So Marla asks that question. Can you share how to promote up in a transition from one company to the next? So that basically means highlighting uh, the highest level of value that you gave to the last company and being able to articulate it in a way that you're making that value proposition to your new potential employer and really highlighting what you can do for them. This is a big miss. I talked about this in the episode one. Um, so if you haven't seen episode one on um, why you're not getting the job through your interviewing, uh, this is a big, big problem that a lot of people have when they're presenting themselves in an interview. They're not talking about what their contributions can do for the company. They're just talking about their contributions. So there's like a wall between what you bring to the table and what they need. So you have to integrate your contributions and the highest value that you gave your past employer or employers and how that is going to be meaningful for this new company. You have to make that match. You, you have to do it. And if you don't articulate that well enough, A, you're not going to be a good enough communicator for them. B, you're not going to be seen as, as high enough level. So you really have to bring that to the table and pull it together for them. And if you don't know how to do that, you're going to have to ask questions and you're going to have to just be curious. And if you really need help, then you need my help slash our help. It's stuff that we do in the kick-ass workshop. And Marla, we can absolutely coach you further on that um, in the workshop. Um, so let me just kind of cruise through here. Dupe, so engrossed, loving it. Oh, hey, Mabel, nice to see you. <laughs> Didn't recognize your Facebook name. Um, uh, Debbie Grant, so good. Thank you very much. Uh, Lisa Anthony, so good. Paula, da, 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 da. Uh, I bless my company every day and continue to go in other ways. So when I get out, I will be more than ready. That's a really great way to do it, Joanne. Um, blessing where you're at, blessing what you're doing, blessing the people around you, blessing your current company, blessing the opportunity that you have. Being grateful for now is so good. <laughs> it's so good. Blessing everything about it is a great way to let all of the movers and shakers in the energetic world move and shake in your favor because they know when you are full and happy and satisfied that you're ready for more. Um, Paula, I'm now thinking about my inability to move up is due to my feelings about money. Oh, that could be, that could be indeed. Not only just feelings about money, feelings about your ability to manage it, feelings about uh, who, what it does and who it is in your life, who it is like it's a person. And that's how I want you to treat it. I want you to get into a relationship with money as if it's a person, as if it is an entity that you want to bring into your life. Like getting a new puppy. Like, oh, this is so great. I love this. Oh, how cute. Oh, how adorable. I want another one. Oh, I want to love more of them. Like, you don't have any trouble getting that way over a puppy and all due respect to puppies. I love them too, but they're not going to put food on your table. They're going to take it off your table. Last time I looked at puppies, they, they eat food. They don't provide their own. So money is even more important to love than the puppies. <laughs> that way, if you have a lot of money, you can actually love puppies and have more puppies. Um, can you please share examples of how you speak at that high level? So, Here's the thing. Um, I want you to pay attention to your boss and your boss's boss and how they speak, what they talk about, what they're concerned about, what they get nervous, anxious, and stressed out about. I want you to pay close attention. I want you to get out of your own way. And I want you to be really, really, really tuned in to what it is that they ask you about, to what it is that they're concerned, to the reports, if you're reporting on metrics all the way up and your boss and boss's boss are like all over that report, clearly the metrics are important to them. Now it may be important to them because it's important to their boss, 
but they're important. So anything around those metrics is important. So that's an obvious one, but just listen to what they say and listen to when they get stressed out, listen to when they push back. You'll be able to pick up pretty quickly, like within a day, what's important to them. And that's how you want to talk. And those are the things you want to talk about because the biggest career builder is you understanding your boss better. When you understand your boss better and understanding what turns her on and turns her off and wakes her up at night and stresses her out and the pressure she's getting from her boss and from her colleagues, if you know what that is, you're going to be a better team member to her and you're going to get it. You're going to get that level. And then you can start moving yourself into the optics of that level, the language of that level, and start seeing yourself from that level. That's basically how to do it. Pay attention. <laughs> I know. You'd think that it was something super duper complicated, but that's what it is. It's called paying attention. And if your paying attention doesn't do it, here's a super secret answer. And this is worth like a million dollars. Lean in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this in my microphone. Ask her what's important. I know. You wouldn't have thought about it on your own. I get it. It's really, really high level stuff. So if you don't know what's important to your boss or your boss's boss, ask. One of the most overlooked communication strategies, and this is important if you're looking for a promotion, is the ability to ask what you need to know. I know. Seriously. Like if you don't know uh, why you're measuring throughput on only the blue stuff and not the red stuff, ask. Ask. If you want to know why your boss uh, has this big long meeting every Tuesday and then she comes out of it like throwing you 17,000 ideas, ask her. Hey, what's going on in that meeting that you always come out with great ideas and I'm always excited and da da da. How can I be better prepared? How can I support you better? How can I how can I make this easier for you? Like ask questions. Boom. Okay. Next. Uh, Tammy Irwin finally made it. Great. And happy to have you here. And that Mo taught me to value what I have now, my current job while looking for more, which actually made my current job so much better. I know. And that isn't that cool. <laughs> uh, Veronica Moore likes the Jen Sincero book. Totally agree. Um, absolutely. Uh, so many great nuggets in there. Jen Sincero is a fantastic writer. She's got a great personality, great attitude. She understands the way the universe works and it's, she's a lot of fun. Uh, listening is important. Yes, indeed. Joanne makes uh, such a difference in how you present yourself. I know, you know, we, we always think that presenting ourselves is about talking. <laughs> it's not, it's about <laughs> I always tell people this. All right, you ready? You've got two ears two eyes and one mouth. Use them in that proportion. Bam. Look, watch, hear. Okay. Uh, Lisa Bent, my company three years. I'm grateful for so much. My preparation is needed to work. I've given a lesson. How do you bless a company when you know that it was a mistake to go there almost immediately been there? Um, you know what, Lisa, here's the thing. Um, it doesn't matter how horrible your company is. There's something great about it because you're probably getting paid. I'm just saying. Although we did have one woman in our workshop who took a job that was kind of like she needed to take it. And actually she did not get paid. And uh, we were all over her, like leaving that job. No, they said they're going to hit me next week. Well, next week came, next week went, next week, next week. Um, so um, if you're getting paid, that's great. If you have a nice title, that's great. If you have colleagues at work that you kind of like, that's good. Um, maybe it's giving you time to like really take a look at what you don't want. And maybe the value is, oh man, this is so awesome that I'm getting really clear on what I don't want so I can get really clear on what I do want. So no matter what, no matter what, there's something you can find that's going to be hinting toward gratitude. No matter what. Victor Frankl was in the freaking Auschwitz concentration camps. He wrote a whole book on being grateful for his life while in the concentration camps. So I got to think that if your job isn't cool and you've been there four months, you can think of something. You can probably think of at least 10 things that you're grateful for and that you can bless. And you know what? If there are people that you work with 
bless them because they're people. Like, it's not their fault. I mean, it might be, but I mean, they're people. They have lives. They're sons and daughters and fathers and brothers of people. And, you know, they're people. So bless them. So if you can't get what you want, bless where you are and get to work on getting that job. So today was all about promotions. Hopefully you got about 25,000 different nuggets and notes and certainly feel free to comment here. Um, I am looking so forward to continuing this series. This is episode two in get that job. And so I want you to get that job. So tomorrow I'm going to be covering another wonderful topic. Uh, what topic am I covering tomorrow? Let me see if I can, if I can find you how asking for your worth can go wrong. Ah! We'll be talking about negotiation, asking for your worth and how it can go wrong. Uh, my social media people said to me, are you sure that's what you want to say? And I'm saying, yes. So asking for your worth can go wrong. And I'm going to help you not go wrong with that. All right. So this is Coach Mo Fall. I'm America's kick-ass career coach. How do we create kick-ass careers? By bringing our soul up, becoming more awesome, shining the light brighter on who we are, being able to speak powerfully, being awesome all the time. You don't fake awesome, you bring it forward. So don't fake awesome, bring it forward. If you need help doing that, like a lot of women do, I've had a coach for over 19 years, come and talk to us. The first way is by booking a clarity call. I think we have the link here, mofall.com slash clarity call booking. I'm the best in the business at helping you get a new job, rock yourself and move yourself toward a better destination. Some of the women who are here on the comments have been working with me for years. They stay in my grad group and guess what? They get supported ongoing in their life and their career journey because your first move in your career is not your last. It's your first. So we can help you up level and get yourself going. Um, but the problem with your career may, be not, may not be something we fix and we'd be happy to sort that out for you. So book your career clarity call. Let's see if we can sort out where you're at and where you want to go. If we can help you rock on, we'll do that. We're the best in the biz. Over 500 women have been up leveled in their lives and careers through the work that we do. And I'm proud and happy to say I've got an awesome team that helps me do the work that we do. Rock on, be kick ass, and I'll see you in the next episode, episode three, how asking for your worth could go wrong. I'm going to help you out with that tomorrow.